Okay, go. Hi, everybody. Fiona here at Nitro Burger Kennels. Uh, my friend Denise is helping me, and we're going to just do a little bit of Fox Terrier grooming. This is Mr. Riley. Mr. Riley is our male. He's uh, a performance dog and our pet. He's not a show dog. But I'm really fussy about how my dogs look, so I like to keep them in, in show trim. Um, the first thing I really want to say is I'm on a lot of uh, terrier pages on Facebook, and lots of people have been complaining about their smooth fox terrier is always itchy and scratchy. Um, I bath my guys every two weeks using Dawn shampoo diluted with some water and a little bit of Mrs. Stewart's bluing. It helps bring out the white in your dog and if you have a black dog, it makes their coat very black, very shiny. Uh, you have to make sure that you rinse really well. Their coat is very short, very dense and close to the body. So when their coat squeaks, when you run your fingers over it, that's when you know all the soap is out. Um, lots of people are complaining about their dogs itching and shedding, and I suspect a lot of it is because they're not grooming enough. Uh, these guys have a, a coat that has some special needs, and most of the stuff that you're gonna buy in your local pet store is not gonna work for a smooth fox terrier. So the first thing I like to do after my guys have had a bath is I like to, to shave the whiskers. This is a man's mustache trimmer, and we just run it a little bit here, and Mr. Riley is being very cooperative. He doesn't like this. One thing he'll do is say, not there, not there, do it here instead, he's funny. Um, and then we also do the ears, stay. And we just trim in here. Now, lots of pet people won't want to do this. I do it, um, it helps the ear lay better. Hold still. There we go. Good boy. Good boy, you're a star, Riley. And I'm just going along the side of the ear here, like this. And this business here in the front, I'll clean up with my shears. Then we take a number seven blade with a one quarter inch guard. And good boy. Go up the chest. And we go against the coat. Go against the coat. Stay. Just like that. And then here. And we try not to go past the rough. Um, if you like, you can take your dogs to a professional groomer a couple of times a year, and that will go a long way to keeping them in coat. And what I mean by in coat is it'll just keep them trimmed up. They'll be cooler, they won't shed as much in your house and they'll be very comfortable. They'll be more comfortable, right? Like, if you see your dog scratching and itching a lot, it could mean you don't didn't get enough shampoo out of it. Or it could also mean that um, he needs to be stripped out. Because there, there's a reason that, that we keep them stripped. Uh, you'll have far less shedding in your house and your dog will be a whole lot more comfortable. Good boy, right? And then, stay. 
and I try not to get in the way of him. I'll just do this. There we go. Stay. And as long as you have a guard on your blade, stay. You're not going to shave your dog to the skin or anything like that. You don't want that. And as you can see, Riley's really used to this. <laughs> and then we go up the back of the leg. Just like this. Do the other leg. Here, I'll come this way, Denise. Just stay on this side. And like that. And up like that. You're only going to the pad. Then we take our smaller shaver and we do the feet. Now, just so you know, I uh, am not a groomer. I may stretch the imagination. And uh, I also do my own grooming for show. So I did take a, a bit of a course, but uh, the reason we trim the feet as well is so that your dog gets good traction on linoleum floors and such. And they don't tend to pick up snowballs in their feet. Good boy, Rye. And it's just a good opportunity to check your dog for ticks, fleas, wounds, injuries. There we go. And then we do the bump. Do we have to do the bump? Stay. Stay. Okay, just come up the hind leg like this. Blend it in a bit. This helps your dog stay nice and clean as well in the back. Just blend that in later with the shears. Now don't move. <laughs> Stand, Riley. <laughs> he hates having his tail down. That's the clipper portion. And now I'm just going to trim up his tail a little bit. I'm really fussy about tails. I know lots of people aren't, and they like a natural looking dog, but I kind of prefer my tails to be nice and shaped. And even though Riley is not a show dog, I still want him to look his best as a representative of his breed. Also for competition. Well, not for competition. Like, I do take him in the sport ring, so I, I want him looking really good, right? But I also am really proud of my dogs 
And uh, when I walk down the street with them, and someone comes up to me and says, oh, what kind of dog is that? I want to be able to say, this is a smooth fox terrier. And I want him to look like a smooth fox terrier, right? Now here I'm just doing a little bit of what we call manscaping. And I'm going to take my, my guard off. See? And here I'm just barely touching anything. Because this being off will go right to the skin, so you gotta be very careful. But like I said, feel free to take your foxy to a professional groomer by all means. Um, and now, here comes the fun part. First thing we're gonna talk about is stripping. First of all, if you have a, a brush, this does nothing. If you have a rubber glove, it does nothing. If you have a pin brush with the little steel wires, that also will do nothing. What you need are some of these. This is a, a pumice stone, and it comes in various coarseness, degrees of coarseness. There's one that's really coarse, and this one is finer, if you can see the difference in the holes. Um, I start with a coarse one, and, and you brush, and you can see all the hair coming off the dock. See that? Now the one thing that I don't like about pumice stones is they do tend to leave a little bit of gravel in the coat. So you gotta take a brush and brush afterwards. And for the show ring, of course, I can't get the precision. But you see the hair coming off in there. And you can get these at Tie Brushy, I believe, carries them. T Y B R U S H E, Pet Supplies in Calgary. Actually, DeWinton, but I think it's, if you look them up, you'll find them on Google. And uh, they do ship. And Darren and Sheila are really wonderful to deal with, proprietors. Oh yeah, and now comes Riley's most hated part. So you can get pumice stones. And I've had these ones for a number of years. Um, I don't use them much anymore because we prefer the ribbon knives. Now these are some, but there's many different kinds. And again, you'll see they come in different coarsenesses, degrees and whatnot. I start with my, my biggest one. Stand. And I bring my collar up. And now the, you pull the skin tight and you push back and then you just and make sure you're laying it this way, not this way. These are razor sharp. You will damage your coat, you'll cut your dog, you'll cut yourself, and everybody will be very unhappy. Riley doesn't like a stripping knife. Because <laughs> he's used to a pumice stone. But you can see how much coat I'm getting. Just that little bit. And that's the undercoat. And that's what you want to be taking off your dog. When they get too much undercoat, they will develop itchiness, hot spots, dandruff. You'll see them rubbing along the floor, scratching a lot. And 
I really can't stress enough the value of learning how to strip out your dog. It just keeps them so much more comfortable and they actually will uh, be so much more comfortable. Their skin will be healthier, their coat will be healthier, and they'll be healthier. Now you can sit, 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 good boy. Or you can lay, whatever you like, Riley. <laughs> he, like I said, Riley doesn't like being stripped. And, and he likes to be the boss. Stand. You don't like right in your face, I do you? And you just work in small sections until you have no more hair coming out. And then you move to a smaller blade. Here you stand. I find with him that short sessions are best. Because to get one of these guys ready for a show is up to about six hours of grooming, if you've let them go. If you've kept up on it, it's just a quick tidy. Now, Here I'm just thinning it out so the hair lies a little flatter. Just because I'm really fussy about how my guys look. I want them to be beautiful. Now, the other thing I wanted to show was like this little stripping knife is much finer. So I'll just go over where I've good boy, Riley. And if you do this once a week, once every two weeks, then uh, you will find you have far less fox terrier hair in your house and on your clothes. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was, where'd it go? Firminator. This is a Firminator. And I believe you can buy them at pet value. They come in different sizes. Um, this was the only one they had the day I went. And I would have preferred one that's half, as, half this wide here. Now, when you, Riley hates the Furminator. <laughs> Riley doesn't like much of anything. <laughs> and you just take it. And you can see the hair that we get off. Then it has a button that you can just release. And it comes with a special guard because these teeth are, are really fine and you, they'll, they break easy. So I advise you when you're not using the Furminator to, uh, come here you, to uh, keep the guard on the teeth so it stays sharp. This too, again, very, very sharp. Make sure that you're not pressing too hard and you don't have to with this. Um, you don't have to push the coat out of the way or anything like you do with a stripping knife. You just have to make sure that you're getting the coat and not the skin. Because again, they're very sharp and they will cut. They will cut the coat, they'll cut you, they'll cut your dog. 
nobody will be happy. So that's that portion. Um, toenails. Can you 